Let's add some variety to our custom entities and let's add custom variants. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom variants to Minecraft. So a variant is basically the same entity, but just with a different texture. So for that, I've actually prepared some different textures, two different textures to be exact, for our custom raccoon entity here. And let's just see what this entails. So first of all, in the entity package, we're going to make a new package called variant. And inside of there, we're going to create a new Java class called the raccoon variant. And this is going to be very interesting. I will be copying over the contents of this class. Uh, this is all available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, an individual just as well. This is pretty much boilerplate code. This is almost always going to be the same thing. Uh, you basically have a an enum here. So this is just an enum with different, you know, variables. So this is going to be default, dark, and red. So those are going to be the three different variants here. And then those methods are just either the constructor, of course, and then also some helper methods that are going to help us when we actually add this to the entity. So this is pretty much all that you do here. If you want to add more, you know, once again, just very easily, just add another one, right? Maybe that's going to be a blue one, for example, right? Blue two, for example, there you go or three rather, because the IDs always have to be increasing. And then they are separated with a comma and the last one ends with a semicolon. Very basic stuff, right? Basic Java stuff, nothing too crazy here. And that's actually all that we need for this particular uh, class in this case. The rest happens in the entity and the renderer and the model. So let's start with the actual entity first and foremost. Here we actually will have to add quite a few things, um, all things considered. So let's just go at the very bottom here. Let's just go down and let's add a new comment here once again. So this is going to be the variance. So this is going to be all the stuff for the variance here. And the first thing we're going to need is once again, some tracked data. So in this case, we're going to need tracked data integer data type ID variant. So this is actually mostly taken from the horse. So if we actually go, I believe this should also be a tameable entity. I'm not even quite sure. Uh, no, it's not. Then this is probably an animal then. Let's see horse base entity. There you go. And I believe that if we actually take a look at the a normal horse entity. This one has a variant here as well. There you go, which is an integer. So this is pretty much almost taken completely from the variant right here. I highly recommend, like I said, all of the vanilla code is always available to you. And this is probably has most of the time pretty good, you know, examples for stuff you might want to add. So what are we going to need? Well, first and foremost, we're going to need the set variant, get variant, and get type variant methods. So those are going to be these ones. Let's just import the raccoon variant. There you go. So that's going to be our enum right here. And you can see we basically have the get type. So this just returns the actual integer right here. This one returns the raccoon variant, and this sets the raccoon variant, rather the, you know, the data type in as an integer. So yeah, that's pretty much all that there is to it. So the getting of this a type here when we actually save this in an integer. This is just sort of the calculation by how it does it basically. Uh, let's actually look at the ID. So, you know, we don't need to get into detail in here. Overall, this is just some boilerplate code that pretty much looks always the same if you just want very easy to do entities uh, and variants here. So there shouldn't be that many things there. So let's just add as well, uh, because we have a tracked data here. We also need to add this right here. So this dot data tracker start tracking this is going to be the data id and this is going to be as a zero at the start so that's also track them that's very good we also need to add another thing and that's going to be for the read and write method so we want to read and write this so this is going to be the reading there you go the variant and then in the writing i'm going to copy this over as well but once again everything here is available to you in the description below get a repository an individual just as well so we have this and then very importantly, and this might be the most important method that we actually want to add, and that is the initialize method. So let's just add this as well. Should get no errors here. And you can see we're basically getting a random raccoon variant value here when we spawn this particular entity in the world. So this is what a, this does. So we're basically, you know, selecting one of the variants and then by at random and then sending that to the variant. So this is uh, this is also then going to work either if we spawn it in the world, which we're going to see in the next tutorial, or if we, you know, spawn this via a spawn egg, for example, then we're also going to get different variants. Now, what we still haven't defined is where those, you know, variants, how they look like. And that's going to be done in the renderer and the model. 
let's just go into the renderer and what we're going to have here is we're going to have a map now i will be copying this over and at first you will say this is freaking insane this looks completely like overly complicated what is this but once I explain, you're going to be fine. So let's just um, import this, uh, alt and enter. And then you can see this is just a map that maps a specific raccoon variant. So our enum to an identifier. So an identifier, we of course know, right? Just points to a particular point in our assets folder, for example. And this just points to different texture files, as you can see, either the raccoon, raccoon dark or red raccoon. And based on the raccoon variant that we're going to give it, it's basically pointing to a different texture. That is all that there is to it. And the only thing we need to change is right here. So we want to change this particular identifier. We want to say, well, actually, we want the location by variant. And then we're just going to get it by doing instance.getVariant. And there you go. Now it's going to return the actual location of a particular of the particular texture based on the variant of the actual raccoon. So that's pretty much all that there's to it for this you know it might look a little bit crazy but overall it's not that you know difficult to understand if you want to put in more here you just add another map put right change the variant here change the identifier and that should be it we also want to change this in the model so in the model here we also pointing to the texture and here we're just going to say raccoon renderer dot location by variant get object dot get variant and that is it. We now, of course, still need to add those two textures here. So let's not forget that. That is going to be in the textures folder, entity raccoon. And then let's just add both of them. That's the raccoon dark and the red raccoon. There you go. And that is actually all that we need to do. You can see this is the red raccoon. This is the normal raccoon or rather the dark one. And this is the red one. So those are going to be the three different variants that we're going to have. And that's actually all that we need to add for the variant to work. So... I guess, for completion's sake, let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft. So let's just spawn a few. And there you go. You can see we have random different variants. And they should also, I believe, have different variants. The babies, I'm not even sure. Uh, so the babies don't have variants. I'm not 100% sure why that might be the case. But, you know, the rest have variants. And, I mean, this is pretty freaking awesome. And it just adds, you know, a lot of flair and just you know, some nice difference and some nice, you know, like, variety to your custom entities. So that's really freaking awesome. Right, I actually forgot we actually also need to, you know, change the create child method right here. So you can see we're basically also getting a random variant here and then setting the variant of the baby as well. And I've already opened this up so we can basically see. If I now right-click on the actual entities and spawn some babies, you can see, let's just, like... There you go. So the entities, the babies are also different variants. So that's actually how easy it is. Oh my God, they're all <laughs> going to their deaths. No. So that you can see that's how easy it is to add variants and also baby variants as well. Right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah. <laughs>